X, Nibiru, Nemesis, Blue, Kachina, Images, Anunnaki, Huge UFOs, Secret, Treaties, Hopi, Prophecy, Global, Chaos, Bullshit, Robert Evans, The Project. We have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us on The Leak Project today, and I wasn't aware of how knowledgeable Bob is with the Enki Enlil bloodlines, the Anunnaki. He's also got some of the best images I have ever seen of these just ginormous starships, or at least they look like enormous UFOs from different NASA imagery, different SOHO imagery, etc. And we, we look at that in the detail the second half of the presentation here at Leak Project, but the first part of the show, or the first half of the show, we look at over two dozen images of what could be Planet X, Nibiru, the Winged Destroyer, Nemesis, its satellites that orbit it as well. Robert has friends that have worked with NASA, other inside sources, and he just breaks it down very eloquently for us today. So this is the best interview I have ever had with Robert, and I think you should enjoy it as well. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Become a contributing member at leakproject.com. You'll get access to exclusive content. And I want to let you know I just received two fantastic books. These are from Gerald Clark. I got the Anunnaki of Nibiru as well as his magnum opus thus far, The Seventh Planet Mercury Rising. So started diving pretty deep into this. We're going to have him on the show once I complete this book so we can discuss it more into detail. And if you use the code Leak Project, go to GeraldClark77.com. You'll get a 10% discount on any of his books or product that he offers. He has some really cool tonics and tinctures as well. Also check out ArtisticVegan.com. Krista Clark has a really cool uh, podcast set up where she'll do shows and show you guys how to make some great vegan uh, recipes. And she's also got a really nice cookbook. Make sure to use the code Leak Project if you want to pick up a copy of that as well. Doesn't mean you have to go full vegan, but if you want to have an alternative to meat, Food, you know, meat dishes all the time. I think it's it's great. So have a fantastic day, everybody, and be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Enjoy the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. We have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us again, and he has compiled about three dozen images from a various amount of sources and friends that he has on Facebook and other connections and networks. And we're going to look at them here today. So not only are these multiple sources, different locations, different times of day, different days, everything, and we're going to bring this information for you guys to decide if it's real or not. Now, Bob, thanks a lot for joining us here at The Leak Project. It's been a while. How are you doing? Been doing okay. Uh, had some problems with my computer. Uh, finally got that taken care of. A lot of my friends on Facebook have lost their computers or their hard drives. So someone is, has been putting something into motion lately. Um, all of my friends are sending these photographs in from all around the world, different locations, different times of day. We have eight, eight of Nibiru's 13 planets in our skies right now. This blue one you're seeing right here, that's what I think the Hopi call the blue Kachina. It's the only one that's nice and blue. Let's, if we could, show them this in full, um, full screen. Go ahead. Okay. Could you turn off your video and just leave your audio on for us? Yes. Uh, awesome. Turning that off right there. We love looking at your beautiful face, but this way we can have a... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. So what are we looking at here? If you could give all the details on these images, that'd be wonderful. Okay. The big white thing in the center, that's our sun. The blue thing is near our sun. I think that's what the Hopi in their ancient prophecies called the Blue Kachina. Now in the Hopi prophecies, they say the Blue Kachina will show up and two of their star brothers will come down and dance in a normal plaza so everyone can see them. Then they will take off their mask. That's first contact. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now my Hopi contact says the last time I asked him that they had not been in contact with the star brothers, but more than likely, they would keep it silent. So I'm not blaming him one bit. I remember reading that prophecy. I updated my um, just my memory banks and read it the other day, and that's not a very old prophecy, actually. No, I, it's not. I was surprised. You know, Mother Shipton was the other prophet, prophetess that spoke a great deal, but everyone's been ignoring her. Uh, after the century goes... She speaks like a science professor of people living inside mountains with a huge amounts of food, the ocean, the ocean floor coming up, being clean, 
and a lot of other the earth crust going underneath the ocean. And she was the only prophetess that said very clearly, a silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. And these men that were not unlike, that were unknown to everyone, they intermingled with the humanity, the survivors, and they brought back the second sight. Second sight, I think that's magic. So. You think that could be like the watchers that have been referred to in ancient texts? It's a good chance because she was very clear in her thing or possibly the other guy that took over her writings. A silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. Nostradamus never spoke about that. None did either of the other prophets. Uh, Mother Shipton, she was born several years before Nostradamus and died several years before he died. So they must have known each other. You know, it's interesting. People forget all this stuff or they think it's all garbage, garbage, garbage. You know, our leaders, possibly with the ETs working in connection, are making sure we are not seeing all this stuff very clearly in our skies every day. Like the image you have right there in front of you, the huge round thing that's being covered by something, but you can still see it's a huge round thing. So they're doing their best, but a number of the viewers around the planet have taken excellent photographs showing these things in our skies over their locations. And they can't stop it. These things are growing larger. See, very clearly, Nibiru has 13 satellites, 13 planets, planetoids, moons, whatever. NASA imaged it back in 2008. So I've got the leaked images that show it very clearly. That, 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 this, this image you're looking at right now, yes, that one image you're looking at right now, that was given to me by a friend at NASA. That is, that's called a DSS image. That's exactly what you would see looking out through a telescope. That image first showed up on Worldwide Telescope and also on uh, Google Earth Sky back in 2007. I sent the image to a friend of mine in NASA, and he sent that image back to me. You have, now this one right here you're looking at, that one there is of Nibiru itself. NASA imaged that somehow, some way. Okay, and all those lines go out to 13 of its satellites. That was from 2008. NASA's been leaking stuff left and right. A lot of the NASA scientists, they don't agree with keeping it silent. So they've been deliberately leaking all this stuff. Now that next image right there, uh, right there, that was leaked in 2009. Now, in the center, just to the right, you see Nemesis and its first six planets. As of 2009, the sixth planet, which everyone knows as Nibiru, with the red dot, was going to be 20 AUs away, astronomical units away from orbiting through our solar system. So they knew, they projected back in 2009 that we would not see it on December 21st, 2012. It has its own Oort cloud. Nemesis orbits around our solar system. Okay, it's Oort cloud. Every once in a while comes in contact with our Oort cloud around our solar system. And it shows up on a lot of NASA's information stuff. Now Nemesis has a seventh planet. It's called Sedna. It's a brown, it's a dwarf planet. Now, in a lot of the astronomy programs, Sedna is showing up very clearly. It has a humongous orbit around our solar system. But what is it orbiting around? Because our sun is way down in the right-hand corner of the, of the orbit. And that's been shown in a YouTube movie TV show called Nemesis, Our Sun's Evil Twin with this one scientist, he clearly shows Sedna's orbit around our solar system, somehow, some way. Kind of amazing how we have all this information, but no one's 
talking about it or now that's a nice that was a other yes that was caught just a couple days ago sun rising right there there's big red just off to the left big red uh, very clear big red goes down through human history the holy bible calls it wormwood the ancient egyptians called it the destroyer uh, the Hopi people call it the red kachina. And then over to, the, over to the right, you'll see the blue object right there. That's the blue kachina. And those are being very clearly seen in the skies over Paris, France, just a couple of days ago on 10.04. Now, the news media is deliberately ignoring this stuff. Now, this image here shows a huge white planet. It has a humongous hole in it, just like the Death Star. Um, I've caught other images up before. I've, I've sent them to you. Your, your listeners know about this thing. Like I said, we have eight of the outermost planets of Nibiru in our orbit right now. Where do these images come from, Bob? Uh, Anthony Reed. A lot of times they don't tell me where they took them because they came off weather webcams. And as soon as they mention exactly what webcam, where, the webcam is turned off. Now look, 0929. That was another good image. Just a little bit further up, we have the, uh, it's blue, 0929F. Next one. Right there. You're seeing two planets. You see our sun up here in the very top. And then right below it, you see planet 13. Not that. It's in, no, not that. It's, it's just there. It's right below the sun, right there. It has all the stripes that Planet 13 has, so I knew exactly which one it was. Now, over here to the right of where your cursor is, right there, there's the white planet that has the humongous hole in it. Now, I think these were from Sharon or June, because June's been catching the best photographs. She's, she's hunting through all of the webcams every day, mostly the weather webcams. And these things are just showing up left and right. So they're out there. They're in our skies. The news media is completely ignoring them. Now you see a huge round glow in this image. I have a fear because that has been seen. Uh, my friend Whale, he's been getting a lot of images from the Middle East for years. And every once in a while, that huge glow shows up in the background. It's not our sun. I think that is Nemesis, the brown dwarf star. Because once every 26 million years in its orbit around our solar system, it comes in very close. Now, in the, movie, in the TV show Nemesis, our sun's evil twin, the scientist in there very clearly says that other people going back through time have found mass extinctions on a 26 million year cycle. Okay, all of the world's governments, every single one, including Russia, have been preparing for this since the 1955. This information leaked out through the Vatican because President Eisenhower met with the Nordics at Holloman Air Force Base in 1955. Pope Pius XII met personally with the Nordics in the Vatican Gardens. The Nordics were later turned out from leaks from the Vatican to be the Anunnaki. They are the Watchers. They are the Nephilim. The Anunnaki are very, very powerful. They've been coming here for 450,000 years, if you believe anything Zachariah Sitchin said. Now, I could not find anything going back through the time to call sets, set, that people were calling him a direct liar. He might have misinterpreted the stuff the 14 tablets, but they never said he was a liar. Neither did the Vatican. 
Well, I just want to bring up something real quick because a lot of people haven't heard of Mauro Bellino that have heard of Zachariah Sitchin. And Mauro yes. Bellino was a translator directly for the Vatican. And the guy speaks several languages. We've had him on the Leak Project before. He wrote a book called The Book Will Forever Change the Way You Look at the Bible. That's one of his many books. And he breaks down the Old Testament with he in Hebrew and a direct translation. And according to him, the Old Testament is almost identical to the stuff that Zachariah Sitchin has written about, a lot of stuff yes. that um, Gerald Clark has written about as well. So well, the there's other people that correlate what Sitchin had said. Right. The interesting part here, I had to research the holy heck out of this, as you well know. The last time it was here was during the Exodus. The Exodus was dated to 1613 B.C. Two brothers... Akmos and Kamos. But that isn't led. 26 million years. Well, I'm just saying the last time Nibiru was in our solar system was back during 1613. Not Nemesis, Nibiru, okay. 1558. Somewhere between there. Um, okay. The Nile Delta was ruled by the Hyksos. No ifs, ands, or buts. The Hyksos entered... Egypt during the 12th Egyptian dynasty and were kicked out at the end of the 17th Egyptian dynasty. Akmos and his brother Kamos helped kick the Hyksos out. The Hyksos were and still are a Canaanite people. Akmos became Pharaoh in 1550, around 1550 BC. The Egyptian army harassed and pushed the Hyksos up near where Jerusalem is today. Okay. Akmos in Hebrew is very clear. It comes out to brother of Moses. Now, the slaves and the evildoers. The slaves were the Israelis, the Hebrews. The evildoers were all of the Egyptians who latched on to them and fled Egypt. Very clear, Ippower, an Egyptian scribe, detailed the Exodus. Very detailed account. It matches the Holy Bible left and right. So, you know, you have to, you have to walk a, I have to walk a very thin knife edge when I start mentioning anything about this. But yes, the Holy Bible... A lot of this stuff is all matching up with this. They don't want, uh, our, the powers that be don't want the general population to know about this. Because their hope is that there will be a very quick depopulation when this stuff happens. Edgar Casey, the sleeping prophet, before he died in 1945, he was the first person to use the term pole shift. He had handmade maps of the United States drawn up showing what the United States and what the rest of the world would look like after this coming pole shift. The technical term is earth crust displacement. The earth's crust, just like in the movie 2012, will shift. Now, we have eight of these things in our skies. Either it's because one of them is, has a really strong electromagnetic pull, gravitational pull, or all eight do. Now, Robert S. Harrington from the Naval Institute, before he died, he said Nibiru was orbiting around through our system clockwise from left to right. Everything in our solar system, except for Pluto, orbits counterclockwise. So, I have photographs going back to April 10th, 2015. All of these images in our skies were very small then, but you can clearly see them. Now they're very large in our skies. You can very clearly see them from the ground because the Earth is orbiting right towards them. Every government knows about this. They've all prepared for it, including the Vatican, probably the Muslim religion, probably the Jewish religion. I mean, you know, Murphy's Law says they all have. That way, when the dust settles, they can all pop back up and, hey, let's find new 
you were people, we, we told you this stuff was coming, but it was all put down in little tiny bits and pieces. This has happened three times in human history. 2900 BC with Chinese Emperor Yao. Believe it or not, he saw something coming out of the constellation of Yin, and it caused the oceans to top the high mountains of China. He had to send out four teams, and they had to find where north, south, east, and west was again. That was actually put in the movie 2012. Near the end of the film, you have a Chinese monk up in his monastery, and he feels the wind on his right side. He turns around, hears the oceans coming over the mountains, and he starts banging his gong, but it's way too late. The next time was Noah's flood, Zaya Sudra's flood. Noah went by many names. 12,900 plus minus years ago. The third time was during the Exodus. The ancient Greek island of Thera, we now call it Santorini, was erupting and exploded. Ippower's account of the slaves leaving Egypt, very clear. Volcanic ash was falling all over Egypt. The only volcano erupting then was the ancient Greek island of Thera. And they've recently dated it exactly to 1613 BC. We've been seeing a lot of this stuff for the first time in 3,000 years. We've never been taught to see our sun with something else next to it, not like that. We cannot see all these planets in our skies, left and right, left and right. You know, Yes, you can see the planets at nighttime when they're little tiny dots, unless you have a high-powered telescope, and then you can physically see them. But people from the ground using their cameras, using their video cameras, using the weather webcams, using regular hotel webcams, shouldn't be able to see any of this stuff. But we're seeing all this stuff in our skies all around the planet. Russia is playing around with all kinds of evacuation stuff now. Well, the Russians started building 5,000 bomb shelters in and around Moscow several years ago. They're all set. They did that because Planet X was incoming. Now, I've never been able to figure out exactly which one is Planet X. Is it Nibiru, or is it one of these eight we're seeing in our skies right now? Uh, Project Camelot, this unknown guy, he came out with this stuff back in about the 80s, I think. He was a highly trained engineer building the deep underground military bases. He turned politician, and he outed the dumbs, as everyone should know them as, deep underground military bases, because Planet X was incoming. Now, that one photograph you got there is really good. Here, right there in the center, there's the white planet with a humongous hole in it. I have other images that clearly show it. Now, the planet just up to its right, that's planet 13. It looks just like Jupiter. But we cannot see Jupiter from the ground during the day. And you're seeing it very clearly right there. The sun is up. The sun's way up here in the very top part. There's the white planet that has a huge hole, and there's planet 13. Okay? Very clear. Now, some of, one of my friends caught planet 13 on 0708. Very clear in our skies. Not foggy like you're seeing it right now. If everyone on the ground could see these as you're seeing them right now, you would have everyone freaking out. No ifs, ands, or buts. So they're trying, with the best of their technology, they're trying to hide this stuff from your view, either by chemtrails or by other forms of advanced technology. Now, people have been seeing this stuff over in Europe since early this year. But all the papers, all the news, they're not saying anything about this stuff. Just recently, there was Channel 8 over in Las Vegas. And I got a hold of the person that was in charge 
I mean, the person that was in charge of the station, she had received two videos showing stuff like you're looking at right now, and it all just went nowhere. I told her what was going on. I sent her several photographs, and she said she was going to pass it on to her other reporters. She had my email address. She had my phone number. Nothing has ever been found or heard of since. Last I was told by my friends down in South America, the United States and Canada are under a mass disinformation program where they will not talk about this stuff. People around our country, from the East Coast out here to Livermore in California, have been seeing these things in our skies all the way up to Canada. And no one, no one is talking about them. They don't want to frighten people. They don't want people to panic, and neither do I. I want people to get out there and get prepared. Something is coming up real soon. The world's governments knew it. That's why they built the deep underground military bases. That's why they built the emergency seed vaults. That's why they built all the FEMA camps from the East Coast all the way up to Alaska. Each country has their own way of dealing with their surplus population, or better put, the survivors. The FEMA camps are showing up at Walmarts now, closed Walmarts. It's called pre-positioning, where they're pre-positioning a lot of military equipment all the way across the United States. Now, why are they doing that? Why don't they have GPSs or something? Well, my friend, each three accounts tell of massive amounts of rocks and meteors hitting the ground. That stuff will take out every satellite that we have. It will clear the skies. That's why a lot of people, before Barack Obama became president, had daydreams and nightmares of the hiding times. All the survivors were hiding from the black helicopters. See, the black helicopters, they have what they call a FLIR device underneath the nose. The FLIR device can pick up your body heat from miles away. So if you're out there in the country, what's left, if you're trying to hike out, if you're trying to drive away, if you're trying to ride a horse, they'd pick you up within seconds and they know exactly where you are. Oh, sorry to interrupt real quick, Bob. I was just going to say, I remember a couple years ago reading an article about how now national parks have multiple drones flying over them on a regular basis Oh, to, yes. to prevent crime. And I feel like that's just another slap in people's face of getting rid of any type of, uh, what am I looking for exactly. here? Breaking out of the Borg. Even for a exactly. weekend, you can't do it without having drones flying over you. Is this person See, thinking like he's supposed to, or should we assimilate right now? Exactly. See, the Georgia Guidestones, 1979, have a basic Ten Commandments on the three uh, granite slabs. And one of those commandments is never allow the population to go above 500 million again. That's a 95% depopulation. Okay, your listeners don't want to listen to me. I'm just this guy sitting on a street corner with a sign saying the world's coming to an end. Listen to That's Pope awesome. John, listen to Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II. 1980, he went to a town over in Germany. He had a huge gathering of German Catholics, plus two reporters. They kept asking him about the third secret of Fatima. He finally gave up. He said that other popes before him would not talk about the third secret of Fatima because they didn't want the communists to start doing many coups, taking land. But what if it was in writing that the world's oceans would cover almost every continent, killing millions within minutes? Why talk about it? He never, never repeated that warning before he died. He gave that warning just that one time, and that was it. He was almost assassinated in 1981. After he recovered, he went straight to the person's jail cell, and off the record, he talked to him over two hours. Pope Benedict 
the first pope to retire in 600 years. He gets all, he gets out of the Vatican. He goes on German radio shows, and he's blasting the Jesuits for their alien agenda. The Vatican knows what's coming down the pipe. Each one of our each one of our leaders, our presidents, everyone, they know what's coming down the pipe. They're keeping it very silent. Edgar Casey was very clear what he thought was going to happen. The entire West Coast was going to be gone in movie 2012. 2012 gave too much information away, and they paid for it, from what I heard. Hollywood's been trying to warn us since the movie ID4, Independence Day, where they outed the fact that the president was out of the loop with the ETs in Area 51. Truman did that. Truman is the one that started... MJ-12. Eisenhower, he met with three alien races back in 1954, and his hands were tied. He couldn't go public. He met with one race again in 1955, and he could not go public then either. When he got back to Washington, D.C., he demanded that no one ever talk about ETs, flying saucers, or anything in the White House, again, he was enraged. He handed everything over to MJ-12. And then just as he's leaving, he gave the first televised account of his leaving office. And he spoke very cryptic to not trust the military and what they were doing with all this stuff. An excellent book by... U.S. Army Colonel Philip Corso, the day after Roswell, details it very clearly how three ships crashed in and around Roswell in 1947. We were just playing around with the Doppler radar systems then, and the radar system interfered with their flight stuff and caused them to crash. The Navy got one, the Army got one, Air Force got the other. The Army was the only one to put all the stuff together, and Philip Corso was given that task of reverse engineering everything they had. He went around to all these different companies, and they did their best. And the Army made a lot of money off this stuff. He talked about the one surviving ET that the Army ship found. It stayed alive for a little while. They allowed it to play around with one of its undamaged ships, and it phoned home. Colonel Corso said that the alien told them that they had bases on the dark side of our moon. NASA, the Apollo program, Apollo 17. As it was going around the dark side of the moon, it was contacted in English and was told to never return to the moon again. Officially, the Apollo program was canceled. Unofficially, it went all the way up to Apollo 20. Luca Scantimberlo, an interesting Italian reporter, he has a website and he has all the pictures that they, that they were able to leak out showing Apollo 20. So we kept things very quiet for a long time. They don't want the humans to know about it. Well, either because they're afraid that just like with the War of the Worlds back in 1939, the radio show, you'd have just panicking left and right, killing each other. But that was another thing that the general is in charge of, Philip Corso, he told, basically told him to come up with a, a program which would educate the people in the United States about aliens and stuff where we wouldn't fear them anymore. And that's where we got all the different movies, the stories, the TV shows. Now, I grew up with Star Trek and then went on with Babylon 5, so I'm, I'm used to Okay, it's an alien ship. Cool. Is he nasty or is he friendly? The Anunnaki 
according to Pope Pius XII, he described them as a warrior race. Because he met with them personally. And all the other popes after him know just as much, if not more. Sorry for the music, but, you know, I'm in here in a Starbucks. Best Wi-Fi reception I can get. I was just recently on with another woman with her shows, uh, radio shows. And, you know, one of my friends is Scott. Uh, and I've been trying to look at some of his videos lately. And the videos are coming up more and more. They're getting better images. And they're not fake. None of this. And... You, Rex, you've caught a couple of things which were not real. And okay, cool. You know, it, uh, I don't have super eyesight. Uh, I don't play around with any uh, Photoshop or anything. A couple of things were slipped past me, either deliberately or accidentally. And uh, But the 99% of the photographs I've been sending you, and you were really skeptical when we first started doing our shows way back. But I think these photographs have been showing you that we're actually seeing more and more and more in the skies. You know, um, I don't know what's going to happen. I wish I did. I seriously wish I did. I've been telling everyone to prepare as if they're going on a six-month backpacking trip. Can't tell you why I say that. Earth crust displacement. The Hopis described it very clearly as earthquake after earthquake after earthquake after earthquake. That will take out every bridge every roadway around the planet. So you're going to have to hoof it. Nice pair of boots, nice you know, walking clothes, a good backpack, uh, dried foods. Uh, I kind of like the tuna that comes in those nice aluminum little, little bags now. Um, beef jerky. You know, something you can just munch on as you're walking or you can save it to a meal time of some type have to have some, some way of defending yourself. I can't say what. You, know, you, you choose your own way. Um, because when everything's down, you can have humanity. They're going to come looking for what you have so they can, they can survive better than what they're doing. Uh, Native Americans. They have prophesied. They've had several dreams over the years saying everything west of the Rockies was gone and the white man was killing and raping and pillaging left and right. The United States, according to Edgar Cayce, is cut in half. The Great Lakes, because of the earth crust displacement, just drills a hole right down from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. And then you got the East Coast, or what's left of it. Now, you know, I hate to talk like this. I really do. I wish I could be positive. But when I've researched the holy heck out of this stuff, I know what the ancient accounts, which still survive, said happened then. And here we have these things in our sky now. So is it going to be just as bad? Is it going to be less? How much of our leaders are going to help the survivors? Personally, I think that the FEMA camps are for the survivors as a workforce. The concentration camps that Germany had during World War II, they just wanted people to die left and right as fast as they could. The FEMA camps, with all the backup food, with all the caskets that they had made and buried right underneath the front of them, they want a surviving workforce. FEMA started buying up these huge Max train train cars several years ago. You've seen them on the railroad tracks with cars, trucks. They're two level. And they had huge openings on both sides. They had huge metal plates with holes, breathing holes, welded onto both sides. And several of my friends, which have seen them on sightings, just sitting there under guard, have been able to sneak up to them and look inside these things. And each friend said they had shackles welded or bolted on on the inside. Shackles. Handcuffs on a chain. 
Now, why in the hell would FEMA do that? I've got photographs of those. I've sent them to you. You've also found them yourself on your own research. Other people say there are other things. I'm not even going to talk about whether they're real or not. I just talk about things that I've seen in my research. Now, a friend of mine, she deals with people that have been abducted, abductees. And I asked her recently what, if anything, she could tell me what her people were telling her. And she's been talking about something called the Mandela Effect, M-A-N-D-E-L-A -E Effect. I haven't had a chance to research that part yet. But she says a lot of her abductees in hypnosis. Her name is Lori McDonald. So I'm quite sure you can look her up. She's on Facebook, Lori McDonald, L-O-U-R-I-M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. I've actually done a couple of shows of her, which I'm not going to really talk about because that will make me sound weirder. Um, things are going to be coming down real soon, my own opinion. With these things in our skies, with the Earth orbiting counterclockwise right towards them, with all the billions of dollars each country has paid for being prepared for this, they're not, they didn't do this on a whim. Okay? They did this so the elite will survive. In fact, the one guy who did the uh, Project Camelot, I still have his, his exact posting. He said anyone else on the surface is on their own. Because you're going to have, just like which was accounted in all three accounts, a fire from the sky coming down, destroying everything that grew water rushing in, washing things away, rocks coming down in huge amounts. Now, you know, the Egyptians barely survived it with their stone palaces. What do you think the average person with their light wood house is going to survive? It's going to, it's, it's going to devastate the entire planet. Okay? And this isn't just going to come down over China, over Egypt. It's going to come down across the entire planet. Our leaders know that. I've been posting this stuff up on Facebook, the ancient accounts, and it's, you know, I'm actually surviving. I'm, I'm actually uh, surprised I'm still up that they haven't pulled me down. They have pulled my computers down. They've been pulling down a lot of other people's computers too, just recently, within the last month. So I don't know what's going to go. I guess the best thing to say is just sit back and wait. You better be mobile though. Because when this stuff happens, not only will you have humanity looking for you, but you'll have every big animal that survives out there, they'll be looking for you too. Because a lot of their food sources are going to be dead, depending upon what happens and who survives and how many of them survive. This is going to be a huge reset button. The Earth will not be destroyed. This has happened three times before. We're still here. Each time, a certain amount of humans do survive, and they start all over again. The ETs, whomever they are, they're working with F1 this time. They've been shooting down asteroids and stuff as they're coming into our solar system. You know, too many things should have happened already. The remote viewers, they said everything should have been destroyed by June 1st, 2013. Nothing has happened yet. We had one asteroid come down, meteorite over Russia, and supposedly a lot of people saw, thought they saw a spaceship right behind it, and they said it fired something and blew it up. So, I don't know. I'll, we, I'll, go I'll ahead. Do you have any questions? I was just going to say, we certainly live in fascinating times, Bob, and with all that's going on around us, I'm starting to wonder if our best bet is to not only be prepared for the worst, hope for the best, send out good energy, help your neighbor, smile at somebody that looks like they're having a bad day, and just the little things right now have got to be so important because if this is on the horizon and if we're going to see it in our lifetimes, 
certainly enjoy the time that you have because we are so blessed right now if you think about it the access to things that we have kings didn't have this kind of access a thousand years ago to right. communications and creature comforts now at the same time if you look at the other side of the coin there's just as much evil lurking in the world with the way big pharma controls things with the way these just dark demonic organizations that have so much power and influence seem to put sweet poisons and just about everything they can get their tentacles into. And I was thinking about that today. You know, when you find out that there's basically Roundup in baby formula, I think to myself, how are these corporations not tried, you know, as in war criminals? I mean, this is an act of war on humanity, and these guys make billions and billions and billions of dollars, all intertwined in different levels of the system. I mean, that is treason in my opinion, getting away with poisoning people of all ages. And uh, that's my rant for the day. So I just wanted to get that 30-second okay. expression out there. Hello! Yeah, well, a pope back in the 1180s, he started the Templars and the Hospitallers. And he made them put this eight-pointed cross on their chests. That eight-pointed cross is the mark of Cain. Cain and Abel. That's the mark of Cain. The Templars and the Hospitallers started the Rosicrucians, the Illuminati, and the Freemasons. And you can find one of each of these three in every kingdom major family. The United States was started by George Washington, a 33rd Order Freemason. Several United States presidents were Freemasons. They're in every kingdom around the planet, every government around the planet. And they're in charge of all the big corporations. So, yeah, I'm not surprised what you're saying, because they know what's coming up. They know more than I do. They know what's coming up because the majority of those people, in my own opinion, are the, Han are the Anunnaki hybrids with long lives. That's why they married into or started every major industry around the planet. Interesting. Isaiah Sudra, the other name of Noah, I'm going to step on Catholic religion briefly here. Isaiah Sudra was a son of the Anunnaki Enki. Anyone who's read the Lost Book of Enki, he talks about it in there after the flood, how Enki and his half-brother Enlil went down to the planet. Enlil saw the ark sitting up on, Mount, on one of the two Mount Ararats. And there was a fire outside where they were burning an altar, altar fire for the gods. Enlil was completely enraged. Why were there surviving humans? He wanted all the humans and the Aegis, the Anunnaki who came down from Mars, to have been eradicated. Enlil, Enki, told Enlil he couldn't let his son die. And it uses that same name, Zaya Sudra, in the book. Several accounts other than Zachariah Sitchin talk about Zaya Sudra. He was a hybrid. He was one of Enki's sons. How many other... Anunnaki hybrids are still alive now. And how much are they focusing all the world governments, all the world's industries towards a certain path? Enki, Enlil, and his offspring never wanted the humans to know anything. He wanted them to remain as a working force, slaves in a sense. And Ki started several religions around the planet. The Zoroastrian religion is one of them. And they made huge 20-foot-wide carvings 
several thousand years ago showing N key right in the middle and this huge craft that looks like outstretched bird's wings. Unfortunately, this craft, and no one ever talks about this, has landing gear. Two metal rods coming down at different angles with round wheels on them. And that thing that they call the Ahura Mazda has been spotted by NASA with all of their satellites since 2000 coming into and leaving our solar system on a daily basis. I wonder why they're coming here on a daily basis. Are they getting Chinese food? Are they getting Russian food? Are they getting fried chicken from... Fried uh, people. Yeah, I'm not going to mention that. <laughs> it's Soylent Green, it's people. Nope, yeah, yeah. Or Kentucky Fried Chicken, who knows? <laughs> You know, I got to jump in real quick because a friend of mine that lives in the Northwest told me a story about how he was driving with his family behind a chicken truck one time. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is terrible just the way he described it. And he saw this chicken that had no feathers and it looked like this genetically modified just anomaly, but he could tell it was a chicken. And the thing was trying to commit suicide. It was, it was so, it was just, oh my gosh, man. Can you imagine what they're really doing to chickens now? I mean, they're in these coops that are just never see sunlight. They're so fat because of all the growth hormones they're filled with that they can only walk a couple of feet before they collapse. And then the, the once again, if you see any commercial about chicken, you want to go to the store and buy some chicken, there's no antibiotics in those chicken. It says specifically, but the way that it's worded, they, they don't put antibiotics in after they kill them. So then they can say that, oh, they've never had antibiotics or get people to think that. It's just another spin on words. And I saw this article a couple years ago where they want to have chicken farms now where they literally hook chickens up to these machines like similar. Imagine the movie The Matrix, but chickens are hooked up to this thing. They're vertical chicken farms. You can read the article on Wired Magazine. Just type in Chicken Farms Wired Magazine in a search engine. It'll pull up. It's horrific, man. I mean, we need to get back to some balance and you know, treat animals the way they need to be treated here. I mean, this is, come on now. I mean, I'm all for a good steak and for a good piece of chicken once in a while, but let them be free while they're alive. Just like the old 1960s uh, uh, soundtrack, in the weird, in the year 2525, <laughs> man is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me think of Conan. I used to, I, I love watching Conan O'Brien, but I remember in 1999, I would watch him religiously, and it was always, in the year 2000. <laughs> 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 Must have been where he got it from. That's cool. Oh, jeez. On your website right now, starshipsaroundthesun.com, and this is my favorite website for Soho images of these craft like you're referring to. Do you think that these are the Anunnaki craft? I don't know what to call them. Uh, that craft right there, the, right there, back up. Uh, right there, yes. That one matches the wall carvings called the Ahura Mazda to a T to a T. You can see it spewing out dry plasma. That's from the SOHO EIT-304 Extreme Ultraviolet Camera there in 2005. Now, everyone wants to believe that these are all BS photographs because this is all cosmic radiation hitting a camera causing all of this. I've been meaning to do this for you but NASA has photographs of what happens when the cosmic radiation hits the camera and they have take, they take a photograph. You can't see one thing in the image, not one thing. It's all whited out with little tiny white dots just all over it. Those pictures there are extremely clean. Now, I want to jump in here because if you look at this image right here, Yes. It looks like somebody had photo. They went into Photoshop. They uploaded it into Photoshop, and then they took a eraser tool and did these did these eraser marks here. These lines that you can see. That's what they look like to me. You see okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Each one of these cameras has a thing put right in the middle of the image, which covers the sun completely. It's on an arm. Right. And the arm you can just barely see from the upper right going down to the center. Mm -hmm. That's the arm that holds this round disc right there in the center. That's, that covers the entire sun so you're not blinded 
by any of the except for CMEs going out away from the sun. They can't right. stop that. Right. But every image on the Soho, on the stereo behind, the stereo ahead, the Sechi cameras, which are the U.S. Navy's cameras, they all have that same image. Okay. That was caught. 2006, it looks like Darth Vader's superstar destroyer coming into our solar system. Well, that definitely does. I'm referring to the streaks of white where it looks like that's Photoshop. Like, so, you know, they said, okay, well, we want to blank this out. We want to just erase this. So they just very easily just, you know, a bunch of lines. Those are other starships. Those are the elongated rod like starships which come in and out of our solar system also. I've, I have multiple photographs. Now, that's an interesting one. That's from the SECCHI, S-E-C-C-H-I, U.S. Navy's cameras on stereo ahead and stereo behind. Each one of these photographs showing stuff like that, the U.S. Navy deleted them. So I have all these images showing what they look like. That's stereo ahead, CR2. Those start showing up in the cameras 2008, the same time we first saw Nemesis, the first time we saw the planet Nibiru. Okay. That's, that, that's one of those huge ships. That ship is the size of our planet. And it's firing an immense, powerful beam. Now, some of the images I have show the beam stopping at something. Look okay, at this. That, that beam just to the left. See where it stops? Yeah. The other one's still pointed, so it still hasn't hit anything. I had a military guy living relatively close to me a couple years back, and he was doing some type of defense project out here in California. Just look at that, those huge beams. And I was telling him about this stuff. He said, okay, give me some images. I'll take it to work. We'll check them out. He took them to work, and he put them under a spectral analysis something something. He said it set the, the gauges right off the list. They were pinned, showing how much energy was coming out of those ships. He wouldn't tell me anything further. He told me they checked them. They were not photoshopped. They were real images. He said, stop doing the research. Otherwise, something might happen to you. That's the original image from the EIT 304 camera showing that huge thing coming down the left-hand side of our sun. Jeez. And they're still seeing these things as of today. That's bigger than our planet. Well, I went to, I spoke before UFO Con 213, and I was showing those up on the screen. Now, that thing there is using some type of form of light speed drive. You see a huge flash, then suddenly the ship comes flying out of it. <laughs> Just like Star Trek does when it comes out of warp, when, it, like, when it's been attacked or something, the Enterprise suddenly, it's quickly decelerating to sub, sub light speeds. NASA has caught many of those images. That is an image that my friend at NASA, he checked it. He made sure there was no Photoshop in it. And he gave me that. Very clear. There's the ship. There, uh, yeah, the next one you went to. Right there. That's another one. There's that huge flash. And there's the ship quickly decelerating. Just as in Star Trek. Any of the movies where you see the Enterprise being shot out of warp and they lose their warp drive and they, they come out of warp drive and suddenly oh, they're quickly decelerating the sublight speeds yeah, these are some great images that one there another one two ships at the same time the upper image is showing just below it you can see the little tiny ship Where, where's your, your, your crosshairs when you're looking at that okay Please. What do you mean? Okay, uh, you're, uh, it's like a little X we can show on there. Uh, the upper ship is the 
ship that's just down to the left of our sun. That's the NLR. It's still doing drive plasma, so it's, it, it has already come out of warp drive. The other ship there on the right side is just below the sun right there. Mm -hmm. It's quickly decelerating in that huge flash. So you've got two ships coming in at the same, almost the same time into our solar system. That's 2012. This is the trifecta. Yeah. Now the, the triple plasma beam attack. Exactly. The first two, they actually stopped. So they hit what they were hitting. The other beam just kept on going. And if you follow the line up above, has an arrow pointing to a little tiny thing where it's on the original image up there. The image is extremely clear. There's no white dots except for all the little stars in the background. So they're BS for solar storms from the sun causing these images to be where they are and how they are is nothing but BS. I mean, this has got to be some highly concentrated swamp gas from Uranus. <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> and there's a ship that's leaving or just came in. You, they look see, so similar to those petroglyphs and the exactly. images in the cuneiform tablets, the Sumerian text. This is incredible. I'm telling you, i got to get you and Gerald Clark together at the same time because Gerald Clark wrote a book called Mercury Rising, Seventh Planet, also the Anunnaki of Nibiru. And I just got my copies of these two books yesterday. We've had them on the show many times. If you use the code Leak Project, folks, if you go to his website, GeraldClark77.com, you'll get a 10% discount. Also check out Artistic Vegan and use the code Leak Project. You'll get a 10% discount on any of her products as well. Krista Clark has some amazing recipes and cookbooks for vegan living. And it's not like a the type of food that you eat that just tastes like cardboard. I mean, she does some incredible work, and her recipes are great. She's got a YouTube channel as well. But in the seventh planet, Mercury rising, a lot of the information that he's compiled in here, Bob, is is very similar to the stuff you're referring to from the Book of Enki and Enlil Enki bloodlines, etc. So yeah. I'm I'm starting to see some patterns here, and I find this fascinating. And these craft that we're looking at here. In my opinion, and, and I still am agnostic to many things, meaning I just don't know, but if I was to say, if someone said, hey, does that look like a, a spaceship to you, or does that look like one of the objects that have been described in ancient texts, etc.?" I'd say, it looks like a spaceship to me. It looks like that to me. So unless somebody could show me without a shadow of a doubt the opposite, saying this is how it was created, a, a lens flare artifact, and this is why it looks like a spaceship because of the, the sunlight reflecting off of this star at 1238 during the day, and the actual equipment that was used had this certain film that was sprayed with a titanium alloy that's connected with uh, your, your hip bone that's connected with your hair. You know, I'm, I'm being <laughs> facetious here, but you get my point. So, I mean, this is some really good stuff, man. Yeah, this and is and really good. This, I'm surprised your website doesn't have a million views a day. Seriously. Well... My wife, we, we talked about what you told us a while back, you know, putting things up there to get money from this, and my wife thought I, I come across as more objective, that I'm not getting paid for this. That you do, absolutely. I mean, this is a passion of yours, and I can certainly tell, and I appreciate your efforts that you put into this, and you don't make money on this, and that's what people need to realize. So for anybody out there that leaves a stupid comment in the comment section saying that, oh, what book you selling, Bob, or, or what not type of product are you selling for Nibiru now? You ain't selling nothing. I'm not selling a damn thing. We've lost two desktop computers. We've lost 18, 18 laptop hard drives to all the research I've had to do over this over the years. Terrible. And, you know, if anyone has a used working laptop that they would like to donate, I'll take a donation. I know how to fix them. I know how to put programs into them. I know how to clean them up. I don't need them for playing games. Just email and going on the web. Something very simple, you know, Please tell our audience here at Leak Project, Bob, how to get a hold of you. My wife's going to kill me if I do that. <laughs> well, we don't want that. A happy wife is a happy life. We've been married almost 40 years, so yes. That's awesome. Okay. She puts up with you, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to do it for your show only. Okay. Okay? Robert H. Evans, Jr., 
700 Palmetto, P-A-L-M-E-T-T-O Avenue, Pacifica, P-A-C-I-F-I-C-A, California, 94044. Now, you're also on Facebook, right? So if somebody wanted to become friends with you on there, they just type in Robert H. Evans Jr. Right, and say, I want to be your friend. Uh, I've had to eliminate some friends for what they put up, uh, but I usually try to accept every friend I can. You know, also, I would like to just throw this out there for our audience. If you guys do want to donate to Robert, you know, send him an email, get a hold of him on Facebook, and say, hey, Robert, I've got a laptop I'm going to send out to you or some money so you can go to Best Buy and pick up a laptop. Uh, you know, this is this is just great. And the more, if you well, have I a good computer can... that you can do research, you could bring more material to the table as well. Yes, or, I, you know, you'd think I'd be at all these different shows. Uh-huh. They don't want me in there with all this stuff, but all the big name people are always invited to all these nice shows. Uh, it's an honor just to be on your show, showing this stuff to everyone that listens to your stuff. Uh, well, thank you, and it's an honor to speak with you. Sure. You know, I, I just don't want anyone to panic with what they think is going to happen soon. I don't know what's going to happen soon. Well, it looks, like there's plenty of, it looks like there's plenty of room on one of these ships, so <laughs> let's just make sure we're on the right one. I mean, I've always wanted to go travel the cosmos. I've done it in my mind a few times. Hello. But I've never... So have I. I can't remember jumping onto a craft and just going into, into light speed territory there or something like Silver Surfer, and I yeah. don't know, man. I mean, these ships just look humongous. They are. And, and, and the, their abilities are far beyond what even you or I can think of, except for Star Trek. You know, Cylons, phaser, phaser beams, Cylons, Klingons, um, Spock, the Vulcans, all the different races that are out there living. I'll tell some, you, there's some hot, there's some, some hot aliens the, out there, Bob. I'm telling you, some of the aliens are <laughs> on the side of the humans. They do not like what the leaders want to do. Ever since 1954, President Eisenhower told him not to come back. He said we would shoot them from the skies. And the aliens have come down here over and over, and they've turned off our nuclear weapons left and right. They've turned off Russia's nuclear weapons. They've turned off our nuclear weapons. They've probably done the same thing over in China, North Korea, every country. Okay? So they want us to survive. They want us to be the first advanced humans to survive what's coming. Now, there are other aliens which signed treaties with Eisenhower. He should never have signed them. That's where the abduction things... Right there, stop back up just a tiny bit. That one wall carving right there, that's what's called the Ahura Mazda. There's the, uh, there's the Anunnaki Enki sitting right in the middle of the ship. Look at the landing gear on that they portrayed. Rex? I, absolutely. I mean, it's described just like you said earlier in the podcast, and I'm looking at this picture right here, and if you flip it around and take Enki out of the you know, picture, obviously, because he's not this 50 quadrillion pound giant, right. um, unless I guess he wants to be. Maybe he could be. I don't know. But essentially, I, I can certainly see, and they're just using him in representation of that because he's the pilot, he's at the cockpit, he's at the helm, he's the captain. He's, he's standing in front of his flying craft. Now, there was another guy. Remember, his name was Josh Green, I think it was. Back in 2005, he was making a film called One Anunnaki. It was already filmed, had the entire character list. But then it was pulled by the powers that be. They showed, he, he depicted this flying craft flying over a man here on Earth. And that huge round part that you see back up in that image, that, that huge round part that's there behind him actually had glass. That? No, no. Keep on going back up to the, uh, up to the, right there. Stop, right there. See that huge round circle that's right there? Okay, now go there, right there. See that huge, almost like a C that uh, is right there in the center? He depicted that as being 
a huge glass interior on the bottom side of the ship. And inside there were the other Anunnaki that were looking out through the windows as they flew over the human, human stuff. Now, Enki is just standing in front of it. You can see his, 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 uh, his ropes go all the way down to the bottom, but they made it look like almost like bird's tail feathers. Mm -hmm. And you got stuff like that all around the planet showing different things. But the Ahura Mazda, the, sorry, Zoroastrian religion in what's now Iran, there's a huge city that's still over there. Now, that's interesting. Back up a little bit. Get down, 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 down. Right there. Project Etheria. Gordon Light. Gerald Light. He was part of Hearst's entourage when they went to what used to be called the Murak Airfield. Now it's called Edwards Air Force Base. Everyone was sworn to secrecy when they were when they were left when he was there he saw this these different races and there was a hand picked western science team there and they were given a display they had a huge block of something and it dematerialized right in front of all of their faces dematerialization that term was not used until 1965 with Star Trek, the transporter device. When he left Murak Airfield, he wrote this letter to a friend. He told him everything. He thought that Eisenhower was going to go public with everything. And he said one of the three races Eisenhower met was an interdimensional race called the Ethereans. Interesting. There's a recent TV show. It's called The Dead Files. They look into ghosts and goblins and whatever else. There's this one lady. Her name is Amy. And a while back, she went up to Oregon with her partner. And they, she was seeing everything. You know, she could see ghosts. She could see all that good stuff. And she, when she looked out the backyard, she saw like an, an opening dimension. And she used this exact terms. Interdimensional creatures and beings were coming into, coming out of the portal. And these interdimensional creatures and beings were causing trouble left and right. Interesting. Is that where all the different ghosts or the demons that we know as demons, are they interdimensional beings and creatures? Huh. So here's this, this guy talking about interdimensional beings called the Ethereans. Then you have this recent show called The Dead Files. And the main, the, the, one of the main characters she saw interdimensional beings and creatures coming out of this portal. So they've been coming here to Earth for thousands of years, causing just holy hell around the planet. Now it's interesting when you hear when you read stuff like this and and then you see a TV show, and, wow, they're talking about the same thing. I tried she's on Facebook, but she hasn't replied to me. I asked her to do deliberately about that that one thing. I was hoping she'd get back to me. Maybe she's too busy. I don't know. A lot of times my emails, they don't go any further than my p clicking the send button. Because I know I'm being watched very carefully. That's why I'm very careful by saying I do not want any panic. I, do want, I don't want any stuff. I want everyone to just be prepared. Because when you start saying all those nasty terms, that's when they usually shut you down. But uh, there's another thing. It's called the Schumann Harmonics. I get up first thing in the morning, I turn on TV, and there's one shooting after another here in the Bay Area, one killing after another in the Bay Area. 
it's been on the rise for about 10 years. The Schumann harmonics, normally they're down in the 7 point megahertz range. The Schumann harmonics are up in the 15 range right now, if not into the 16 or 17. The Schumann harmonics, they affect the brains of almost all mammals. Maybe that's part of... Yes, how's it going there, Rex? Hey, it's going great. We started talking about the Schumann resonance and it affecting all mammalian brains, and I was about to say, hey, does that mean reptilians too? <laughs> and da we got much. disconnected. Um, but just real quick before we close out, you were saying something about the Schumann resonance affecting all, all mammalian brains, and then we got disconnected. And then I just want to say thanks again so much for coming on the show. Well, I think the Schumann effect is causing all the anger, all the violence now. Okay? Uh, none of my other ancient accounts mention anything about this. You know, it's all our, our brand new high technology we know about now. Uh, but yes, something's causing uh, all the violence around the country right now. One shooting, one stabbing, one drive-by, um, you know, people running over people in crosswalks, people running over bicyclists. And this stuff has been on the rise for years now. Uh, I think Marsha Masters talked about it years ago. You know, this whole thing, Marsha really... You know, Pluto was the first of the planets starting started to warm up its atmosphere where the methane was showing up in its atmosphere. All the plants coming inwards. Um, and, you know, now these things are in our skies. So it's almost, almost everyone I have been talking to it's either going to happen before the end of this year or just into 2017. So we're running out of time. Your listeners have got to get prepared. No if, ands, or buts. I would be the first one to clap if nothing happens. Okay? Rex, you still there? Absolutely. I was just going to okay. say, there you have it, folks. Uh, wise words. Expect the best. Plan for the worst. There you go. Almost exactly what Marshall Masters says all the time. <laughs> hey, I'm going to be speaking with Marshalls tomorrow. That's cool. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah he's a great guy. I like Marshall. Where did he go? He's up in Colorado somewhere, or Lake Tahoe. Uh, he's going to Colorado tomorrow, I think, for something with Coast to Coast, and, or not Coast to Coast, but something with George Newry and Gaia TV, I think. Yes. Yeah, Coast to Coast won't let me on their show. <laughs> uh, George Knapp, uh, the other George, um, whatever. Even though they were the first ones to talk about this stuff on their shows. All the ships going around the sun. Starships around the sun. I wonder how I got that, that name for that website. Hmm. Because they were showing the same images. Anyway, you take it easy. Be safe. I've got to sign off here. i got a little walking to get back to work. <laughs> right on. Thanks so much, Bob. You have a wonderful day. really appreciate everything. And don't fret, man. I'll bet you if they see any of the podcasts you've done here at the Leak Project, it'd be silly not to contact you. And uh, we'll, talk, <laughs> we'll talk again soon, my friend. Okay, take care. Take care. All right. And folks, also check out leakproject.com. Become a contributing member. Get access to exclusive content. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day and be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Talk to you soon. <laughs>
latest 2016 NASA Insider Planet X Nibiru Nemesis Blue Kachina Images Anunnaki Huge UFOs Secret Treaties Hopi Prophecy Global Chaos Bullshit Robert Evans Leak Project. We have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us on the Leak Project today, and I wasn't aware of how knowledgeable Bob is with the Enki Enlil bloodlines, the Anunnaki. He's also got some of the best images I have ever seen of these just ginormous starships, or at least they look like enormous UFOs from different NASA imagery, different SOHO imagery, etc. And we, we look at that into detail the second half of the presentation here at Leak Project, but the first part of the show, or the first half of the show, we look at over two dozen images of what could be Planet X, Nibiru, the winged destroyer, Nemesis, its satellites that orbit it as well. Robert has friends that have worked with NASA, other inside sources, and he just breaks it down very eloquently for us today. So this is the best interview I have ever had with Robert, and I think you should enjoy it as well. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash clandestine time lord. Become a contributing member at leakproject.com. You'll get access to exclusive content. And I want to let you know, I just received two fantastic books. These are from Gerald Clark. I got the Anunnaki of Nibiru, as well as his magnum opus thus far, The Seventh Planet, Mercury Rising. So started diving pretty deep into this. We're going to have him on the show once I complete this book so we can discuss it more into detail. And if you use the code Leak Project, go to GeraldClark77.com. You'll get a 10% discount on any of his books or product that he offers. He has some really cool tonics and tinctures as well. Also check out ArtisticVegan.com. Krista Clark has a really cool uh, podcast set up where she'll do shows and show you guys how to make some great vegan uh, recipes. And she's also got a really nice cookbook. Make sure to use the code Leak Project if you want to pick up a copy of that as well. Doesn't mean you have to go full vegan, but if you want to have an alternative to meat, Food, you know, meat dishes all the time. I think it's it's great. So have a fantastic day, everybody, and be the change you want to see. This is Rex Bear. Enjoy the presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. We have Robert H. Evans Jr. with us again, and he has compiled about three dozen images from a various amount of sources and friends that he has on Facebook and other connections and networks. And we're going to look at them here today. So not only are these multiple sources, different locations, different times of day, different days, everything, and we're going to bring this information for you guys to decide if it's real or not. Now, Bob, thanks a lot for joining us here at the Leak Project. It's been a while. How are you doing? Been doing okay. Uh, had some problems with my computer. Uh, finally got that taken care of. A lot of my friends on Facebook have lost their computers or their hard drives. So someone is, has been putting something into motion lately. Um, all of my friends are saying these photographs in from all around the world, different locations, different times of day. We have eight, eight of Nibiru's 13 planets in our skies right now. This blue one you're seeing right here, that's what I think the Hopi call the blue Kachina. It's the only one that's nice and blue. Let's, if we could, show them this in full, um, full screen. Go ahead. Okay. Could you turn off your video and just leave your audio on for us? Yes. Uh, awesome. Turning that off right there. We love looking at your beautiful face, but this way we can have a... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. So what are we looking at here? If you could give all the details on these images, that'd be wonderful. Okay. The big white thing in the center, that's our sun. The blue thing is near our sun. I think that's what the Hopi in their ancient prophecies called the Blue Kachina. Now, in the Hopi prophecies, they say the Blue Kachina will show up and two of their star brothers will come down and dance in a normal plaza so everyone can see them. Then they will take off their mask. That's first contact. No ifs, ands, or buts. Now, my Hopi contact says... The last time I asked him that they had not been in contact with their star brothers, but more than likely they would keep it silent. So I'm not blaming him one bit. I remember reading that prophecy. I updated my um, just my memory banks and read it the other day, and that's not a very old prophecy, actually. No, I, it's not. I was surprised. You know, Mother Shipton was the other prophet, prophetess that spoke a great deal, but everyone's been ignoring her. Uh, after the century goes, she speaks like a science professor of people living inside mountains with a huge amounts of food, 
the ocean, the ocean floor coming up, being clean, and a lot of other the earth crust going underneath the ocean. And she was the only prophetess that said very clearly, a silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. And these men that were not unlike, that were unknown to everyone, they intermingled with the humanity, the survivors, and they brought back the second sight. The second sight, I think that's magic. So. Do you think that could be like a watchers that have been referred to in ancient texts? There's a good chance because she was very clear in her thing, or possibly the other guy that took over her writings. A silver ship came to view and spewed out men of like unknown. Nostradamus never spoke about that. None did either of the other prophets. Uh, Mother Shipton, she was born several years before Nostradamus and died several years before he died. So they must have known each other. You know, it's interesting. People forget all this stuff or they think it's all garbage, garbage, garbage. You know, our leaders possibly with the ETs working in connection are making sure we are not seeing all this stuff very clearly in our skies every day. Like the image you have right there in front of you, the huge round thing that's being covered by something, but you can still see it's a huge round thing. So they're doing their best, but a number of the viewers around the planet have taken excellent photographs showing these things in our skies over their locations and they can't stop it. These things are growing larger. See, very clearly, Nibiru has 13 satellites, 13 planets, planetoids, moons, whatever. NASA imaged it back in 2008. So I've got the leaked images that show it very clearly. That, that, this, this image you're looking at right now, yes, that one image you're looking at right now, that was given to me by a friend at NASA. That is, that's called a DSS image. That's exactly what you would see looking out through a telescope. That image first showed up on Worldwide Telescope and also on uh, Google Earth Sky back in 2007. I sent the image to a friend of mine in NASA, and he sent that image back to me. You have, now this one right here you're looking at, that one there is of Nibiru itself. NASA imaged that somehow, some way. Okay, and all those lines go out to 13 of its satellites. That was from 2008. NASA's been leaking stuff left and right. A lot of the NASA scientists, they don't agree with keeping it silent. So they've been deliberately leaking all this stuff. Now that next image right there, uh, right there, that was leaked in 2009. Now in the center, just to the right, you see Nemesis and its first six planets. As of 2009, the sixth planet, which everyone knows as Nibiru with the red dot, was gonna be 20 AUs away, astronomical units away from orbiting through our solar system. So they knew, they projected back in 2009 that we would not see it on December 21st, 2012. It has its own Oort cloud. Nemesis orbits around our solar system, okay? Its Oort cloud every once in a while comes in contact with our Oort cloud around our solar system. And it shows up on a lot of NASA's information stuff. Now, Nemesis has a seventh planet. It's called Sedna. It's a brown, it's a dwarf planet. Now, in a lot of the astronomy programs, Sedna is showing up very clearly. It has a humongous orbit around our solar system. But what is it orbiting around? Because our sun is way down in the right-hand corner of the, of the orbit. And that's been shown in a YouTube movie TV show called Nemesis, Our Sun's Evil Twin, where this one scientist, he clearly shows Sedna's orbit around our solar system somehow, some way. 
kind of amazing how we have all this information, but no one's talking about it. Or now that's a nice. That was a of the yes. That was caught just a couple days ago. The sun rising right there. There's big red just off to the left. Big red, uh, very clear. Big red goes down through human history. The Holy Bible calls it wormwood. The ancient Egyptians called it the destroyer. Uh, the Hopi people call it the red kachina. And then over to the, over to the right, you'll see the blue object right there. That's the blue kachina. And those are being very clearly seen in the skies over Paris, France, just a couple of days ago on 10.04. Now, the news media is deliberately ignoring this stuff. Now, this image here shows a huge white planet that has a humongous hole in it, just like the Death Star. Um, I've caught other images of it before. I've, I've sent them to you. Your, your listeners know about this thing. Like I said, we have eight of the outermost planets of Nibiru in our orbit right now. Where did these images come from, Bob? Uh, Anthony Reed. A lot of times they don't tell me where they took them because they came off weather webcams. And as soon as they mention exactly what webcam, where, the webcam is turned off. Now look, 0929. That was another good image. Just a little bit further up. We have the, uh, it's blue, 0929F. Next one. Right there. You're seeing two planets. You see our sun up here in the very top. And then right below it, you see planet 13. Not that. It's in, no, not that. It's, it's just, the, it's right below the sun, right there. It has all the stripes that planet 13 has. So I knew exactly which 